100th anniversary of the founding of the Wipers Times, which is a, a trench newspaper which was set up by serving British officers on the front line. Um, it's an extraordinary publication, satirical, funny, sentimental, moving, which ran from 1916 until the end of the war. It was set up uh, by two British officers, um, Fred Roberts and Jack Pearson, who found an old printing press um, in a cellar um, beneath uh, the ramparts of Ypres. And they were looking for salvage to smash up and use to prop up trenches. Um, and instead, their sergeant, who'd been a, uh, a printer on Fleet Street before the war, said, I can make this work. And they made this extraordinary decision um, in the middle of a war, obviously not much going on for them to do, that they would produce this newspaper right there. And that's what they did. And that extraordinary idea is 100 years old. I am Nick Roberts, the grandson of Captain Fred Roberts, the editor of the famous trench newspaper, The Wipers Times. The paper was so called as British soldiers referred to Ypres as Wipers. In this short series of films, we'll be commemorating this remarkable production that was produced in the most hostile of environments. We'll look into some of the stories, and in each film, an extract from one of the editions of the newspaper will be read by myself, by veterans of the Sherwood Foresters Regiment, by serving soldiers from the Mercian Regiment, the successor to the Sherwood Foresters, by a London schoolboy, and by historian Peter Doyle. Here's the introduction to the first copy. Having managed to pick up a printing outfit, slightly soiled, at a reasonable price, we've decided to produce a paper. There is much that we would like to say in it, but the shadow of censorship enveloping us causes us to refer to the war, which we hear is taking place in Europe, in a cautious manner. We must apologise to our subscribers for the delay in going to press. This has been due to the fact that we have had many unwelcome visitors near our printing works during the last few days, also to the difficulty of obtaining an overdraft at the local bank. Any little shortcomings in production must be excused on the fact that pieces of metal of various sizes have punctured our press. We hope to publish the Times weekly, but should our effort come to an untimely end by any adverse criticism or attentions by our local rival, Messrs Hull & Co, we shall consider it an unfriendly act. We take this opportunity of stating that we accept no responsibility for the statements in our advertisements. In conclusion, we must thank those outside our Stallery staff who have contributed to this, our first issue, and offer our condolences to those who have paid 20 francs a copy. The latter will at least have the comfort of knowing that proceeds have gone to a worthy cause. The editor. The editor takes no responsibility for the views expressed or the thirst for information on the part of our subscribers.